I'm sorry, I was very remiss. I forgot to introduce myself. Um, my name is Justine McCarthy and I'm a journalist with the Sunday Times. And what reminded me to say that was when John was talking about trust and the, um, the need uh, to trust but also to question in society, it reminded me of one of the first uh, lessons I was taught as a student journalist in the College of uh, Commerce in Rathmines a long, long time ago. It was the difference between scepticism and cynicism. Scepticism being the healthy side of the coin, um, that you, you must cultivate it, always ask, is what you're being told the truth and what is the reason for what you're being told as opposed to cynicism, which is to never believe anything you're told. Um, Jane Souter um, is a former colleague of mine um, in the Fourth Estate, but she's become very respectable now, and she's a lecturer in Ireland's most beautiful university, um, the uh, UCC, Cork University. Uh, Jane lectures in uh, politics, and she's a former economics editor of the Irish Times and co-founder of www.politicalreform.ie. And she's going to talk to us about our lack of uh, national confidence and how we're going to tackle the problem. Thanks, Jane. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Justine and, and John. Um, I think when we, we go back to it, the, the, the big problem that we have, John says that it's, it's not such a problem that citizens have a lack of trust. And that is maybe true in the immediate term. But I think over the, the medium term and longer than that, um, citizens' trust in the functioning of government and in democracy is absolutely vital. And what we need to do is to, is to work on ways in, to rebuild that trust so people no longer feel the sense of alienation and anger and so on that, that is so patently out there at the moment. And I think the, the encouraging thing is that people want action to, uh, to tackle corruption, but they also very much want political reform. I think there's a real appetite out there for a new politics, for a new republic, for a, for a new way of doing things, and that's what we need to be looking at. But rather than just kind of hoping or in, in, in some way trying to encourage the elites to, to somehow change their behaviour, the citizens, the people need to be very involved themselves. And I'll talk a little bit about that. I think that we need to be looking at institutions such as a, a citizens' parliament, a, a citizens' assembly, and that that's going to be crucial to, to our reform. But if we want to look at what the actual problems are, if you look at the Irish political system, probably the biggest problem, while all of the things John mentioned about whistleblowers and FOI and all of these things are crucial, probably the biggest problem is the, the completely dominant executive. And all parliamentary systems are in some way fused. They don't have the separation between the executive and the legislature that you might see in the US. And our do most European parliaments can't hold executives to account the way the American Congress can try to hold the American president to account. But if you look at us in a comparative European basis, we have the most fused parliamentary system. We have the most dominant executive. We have the fewest checks and balances. Um, we're probably one of the, the few countries where simply two members of the cabinet um, can stay up all night and take a momentous decision um, at, the, at the end of September that will affect all of us while their colleagues and the rest of the country sleeps, you know, safe in the knowledge that whatever decision they take can be put through the Parliament, that nobody will be able to hold them to account, that there will be no transparency about that decision-making process. And probably we are one of the, the only countries in Europe where that could happen and it's because of the pure dominance of the executive. So I think that's one of the things that needs to be, needs to be tackled first. Um, a lot of the time people talk about political reform and the knee-jerk thing is, oh yeah, we need a new electoral system. Now maybe a new electoral system would, would be nice, but I don't think that you can expect that uh, the change of a few faces just because you have a list system or you have a German mixed member system I, can't, I don't see how you can possibly expect that to change a political culture. I don't see how you can expect it to suddenly turn our TDs into legislators, into, into people who are concerned about policy. 
you know, there's three functions of, of uh, legislators generally across the world. And one of them is to provide linkage and representation of, of their citizens. Another is to legislate, and a third is to form policy. And our TDs only do the first. And I don't think that changing an electoral system is some sort of silver bullet that suddenly we're going to change that. It's not going to change people's demands that they want to see their local TD at, at a funeral. Or it's not going to change the political system where if you go to your TD for a passport, you'll get it in four days, whereas if you go through the bureaucratic system, it'll take at least ten. You know, these things need to be changed separately. And an electoral system isn't any sort of uh, a change in the electoral system, isn't any sort of penalty. Maybe if you do the other things first, then you can look at it and, uh, and think about it. But I think really what we need is, um, is for citizens to be able to feel involved again, to be able to be, feel that they're part of the debate, to be able to contribute to the rebuilding of, uh, of our republic now. And one of the best ways to do this, and you know, it has been uh, carried out in other countries, is to have a citizens' parliament, is to have a citizens' assembly. And that's where we would... Uh, Elitists often don't like this, you know, they kind of sneer at the, the possibility of the, the wisdom of the crowd and so on. But it has worked in other places. And what you would have is um, a representative uh, sample of people who could be brought together to think about the big issues, to debate them, to be able to cross-question experts on different things, to be able to debate and to be able to decide. And if those citizens should decide on something that needs referendum, that, that needs constitutional change, then what you need is for the parties to have agreed that that referendum would go to the people without they themselves intervening and, uh, and being able to change it. I think even as Morris Manning said in the, the Dáil at the launch of a book um, last week, that you can't expect the politicians to do this for themselves. You can't expect them to be able to do it. If you do, then all of the measures will be shelved there has to be some sort of uh, force coming from outside of the, the houses uh, of uh, the eruptus that encourage politicians to reform, encourage this to happen. There has to be measurable things that can happen, measurable ways uh, of doing it. And um, I think at the end of the day, if we can do this, it's something that Ireland can maybe do well, we can reclaim our democracy, we can lead Europe in this, in, in this sort of reimagining of, of how to get citizens involved. It can be a very positive story coming from us. I think um, if you think back to one of the things that uh, Henry Grattan said um, in his last speech to the, the Parliament in, in 1800, 210 uh, years ago, that the Constitution may for a time seem lost but the character of the country cannot be lost. And I think that's what we need to look to. We need to think about how we're going to, to grab this and we need to get the people involved in it. Thank you. Thank you.